Uh, there we go. So we're going to talk about uh, the impeller inlet design for a few minutes. Uh, we'll talk about just a quick notional cavitation overview, and I think uh, for this crew, this is probably way beyond you, so it, it's, it's probably not going to be necessary. Uh, some general performance uh, generalizations. We'll look at basic inducer functions. Uh, I'll give you an example of an inducer. And uh, then we'll talk about inducer design selection. Uh, OK. Talk about units for just a minute. Uh, I'm from the US. I'm used to working in gallons a minute and, and feet ahead. Um, uh, most uh, pump guys over here I know work in metric. Uh, cubic meters per hour is the one that I'm familiar with. And I imagine you use also cubic meters per second. Um, I, I haven't seen a rhyme or reason uh, to, to what people use over here, but it's, it's what I'm familiar with. And cubic meters per hour, I think, helps, uh, helps in that translation with, cubic, or with gallons per minute. I also want to point out uh, everything we're going to talk about today is in low RPM type applications. There are experts out there. We had no experts. Uh, I was hoping we might have one that could help uh, bring something to the party today in terms of you know, very high speed uh, applications. But we're going to be talking about two pole, four pole speeds, maybe, uh, maybe four or 5,000. Certainly not high enough for uh, uh, turbochargers. So one of the things I thought we ought to talk about before we get into um, uh, inducers is, well, what will we do instead of an inducer? Uh, things that you can do. Slow the pump down, obviously. The, the slower the pump, the less challenging the, any one MPSH performance requirement is. Uh, the same would be with flow. Uh, if you reduce the flow, it's less challenging for any one pump. Uh, you could raise the fluid supply, put your tank up on a, on a stand, or you could lower the pump. Uh, for instance, we're working on a dry dock job now. Pump's going to be down in a pit about 50 feet so it can move enormous amounts of water uh, with the fairly challenging MPSH. Uh, we could take an impeller and design it for low MPSH, which now you're going to start compromising some of your efficiency. And we'll talk about that a little bit more down the road. In fact, I heard a couple uh, comments this morning I'm, I'm intrigued about. And then finally, what we're here really to talk about is inducers. Uh, and and uh, adapting an inducer to a high efficiency impeller is a very viable option. So everybody's seen inducers <coughs> come in all kinds of shapes and forms, but for the most part, uh, you look at an inducer and you know what you're seeing when you look at one. And uh, for my compressor friend, the uh, inducer goes into the suction of the pump, into the eye of the impeller, there's the casing. So nothing magic there. Uh, a number of ways that you can mount an inducer to an impeller. Uh, one of the most common ways is to just thread it onto the shaft like an impeller nut, and uh, either you know through a, a stud in the shaft or threads in the end of the shaft. Perfectly common. Uh, a few uh, a few restrictions. Once the torque gets up to a certain level, and, and I would say if you're looking at um, flow rates and for me 2,000 gallons a minute, it was a 500 yeah. cubic meters per hour, you know, that ballpark. Now you're starting to get to where you're asking that threaded shaft to do a lot. So you probably need to transition to something else. Also, um, you really wouldn't want to use this type of an application when you're having severe duty. If the pump's going to be cavitating all the time, lots of vibration, it's probably not your best choice. Then you want to move on to an inducer just stuck onto a shaft. So it's, you have the full torque uh, carrying capability of the shaft. And uh, typically what will happen, this is a vertical turbine pump as an example, but the, uh, 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 the inducer gets keyed to the shaft, very high torque capability, and uh, it's pretty rugged. It's not going anywhere until there's no more vein left to pump. One of my favorite inducer pictures. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, courtesy of uh, um, Chris Brennan at Caltech, who's uh, just a tremendous researcher in, uh, in uh, low MPSH pumps and inducers. But uh, you can see here, the inducer section is actually an integral part of the, uh, of the casing, or the impeller, I should say. 
uh, still even the impeller is very much an axial flow machine, but that's one rugged beast, and it will it will go it will go for a long time.